Yo, what's up guys? A balance patch review. And you might ask, wait, say, why are you a little bit late on this? Well, I did first do the Legend Tournament viewer party. After that, I said I have to go out with like a bunch of people and then meet them and then meet a bunch of other people. And that is exactly at the time where they did the balance patch over there. So that might also mean that I have no clue when they actually post balance patch. Because of course, for me as a content creator, it is best right away when they have a balance patch to do the balance patch review and then also do it on stream or anything like that would make a lot of sense. But since I do not know when these things are posted and they don't tell me, I come back home from the bar and that is my moment where I'm like, yeah, I should do a balance patch review either right now with maybe a little bit of drinks or I do it tomorrow with a maybe a little bit of a hangover. So I chose to do the first part of that. However, there's always been these guys and Reddit is all full with it with like tin foils on, checking if Google Maps still has a flat earth over there and let's blame people that actually have nothing to do with this balance patch because he pulled an LD5 and his LD5 got buffed to being insanely the same and still shit and RNG but it is all his fault or is it? I have no clue. Let's go into the balance patch review and we're gonna address Nix of course as well. So right now, during my balance patch review, if you ever seen Rick and Morty, if I sound like the older guy from Rick and Morty, you know why. So first of all, we have the Gojo, Water, Wind and Lights, and we have the Skill 2, which is going to be decreasing attack bar for a 20% chance by 15%. It is still the 2 to 3 hits, which is kind of looking like a more-ish, but in my opinion, still kind of bad. I think it's like all of those units, I think all of the three of them are a defense type unit, whereas the skill one is still kind of useless. It's not really going to be changing anything like that. So I don't really like it that much. We have the fire and the dark one, and they have a cool time decrease on the S2, which I think is fair. It's kind of getting more towards like Theomars ish, where they have like the armor break on lower cooldown. Kind of makes sense. Not that great, but not that bad either. We have the Mega Me on Fire that now has a 100% strip rate rather than 30%. does make a lot of sense, but it's still a Gyu, but worse. So I don't really think it's going to be that much. Sure, it does have the 28 lead on speed, which is something, but not crazy good. Then we have the Nobara on Water, which I just simply said, up the rates. And that is the main thing that I've mostly been addressing. Up the rates, get less RNG in, and we'll go to a point on that a little bit later in this balance patch. But you all know what we're waiting for, right? We have seen the allegations on Reddit. You know what is up. You have your tinfoil on, and you check that Google Maps still had a flat earth over there. But let's continue on with this balance patch review. So we have this one getting 100% rate. Right. Doesn't make sense. With the Water Indra that now has, uh, rather than the Provoke, it is increasing the attack bar by yourself. Uh, wait, so decrease the okay, decrease the damage you take by 50%. Now it's increasing your attack bar if you do get hit by a provoke. Not really too crazy, but not really too bad. Then we have the wind, uh, the Indra that is light, fire, and wind, which actually has an upgrade of branding. It is from 40 to 70, but it also has 10 on the skill ups itself so it is actually a 50 to 80 which is definitely not bad especially for Dius. i think it's definitely worth it to get that so i don't think it's a bad unit it's actually one of the things that i did recommend for Dius to get like an upgrade of uh a balance patch in general but that is at some point also the thing if i just mention enough things at some point i'm gonna be right on some and i'm gonna be wrong on some others let's continue on we have the fire Geralt that is now a chance of lowering the cooldown if there's an inability effect on the enemies. Still would say that Arika is probably better, but sure, whatever. Uh, then we also have the wind and the dark one that now has a higher chance to land their bomb, but I'm still not sure if this is 100%, like 50 to 70. I think still that especially the dark one should be the best bomb ring game where it has like a guaranteed land if you have enough buffs on your ass, but apparently not the case, so it's kind of shitty. Uh, we have the Light Geralt that now has less damage when it has Adrenaline, which I think is kind of bad. I think you should start with Adrenaline or do something else, so it's kind of bad in the first place. Light Seer is actually something that I did call out. It should be fast on the stacking, so now it's stacking rather than a 20 per turn. It's tracking like a 40 per turn, which now in 5 turns you would be up to all the way to 100. So it definitely is a lot better for Siege offense. RTA wise still might be a little bit ignored. Maybe a decent last pick in a bruiser scenario where you would normally pick a Miles that oh, this unit could deal a decent amount of damage itself. So I do think that the light series is a pretty decent buff. So that's the first one of all of these that would say like, oh, not too bad, not too bad. We have the light Jennifer, which is, I think one of those, was it one of those Hay Gang kind of counters or like a free to play Hay Gangs or not, not the free to play, but like, like night for Hay Gang kind of things. 
Is it really that much better now? Uh, I'm not too sure it now works for both. And it, 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 I don't really like it. Then we have the uh, Water, Wind and Dark. And then also Dark again. Vampire, which has the S2 of the Weakening. And then with the Weakening, you go for one to two hits. And then you also lower the uh, chance of landing your things. But the biggest issue, especially for the Dark one, Cadiz should also strip on this hit, which it still doesn't. And therefore, the two hits, it does kind of make sense, but it's also not that great as long as the Cadiz doesn't strip on the S2. So kind of the thing over there. Well, we're almost there. We're almost there. I see what you guys are looking for. But first, Heart Mage. We have the Celia now decreases the attack bar of the enemy who has a beneficial effect successfully removed by 10%. It's not too bad, but it's not too great as well because you sleep anyway. So then do you really have to lower the A to B? But yeah, okay. Then we have the next one, which is increase attack bar of all allies. If a ally granted with a harmful access or like, yeah, was not granted with a harmful access effect. Holy Jesus. <laughs> okay. Something like that. Due to the passive of this unit okay first of all a few things uh hey i pulled the nix and then people are like you you pull the nix and then it suddenly gets buffed that's just random odds if you don't believe that go to google maps check if they're still flat so yep that could be a thing that you would or not would believe uh, I, I, I don't care but is this passive really good right now people are like oh that's the next ragdoll and it's crazy good well let me tell you that this passive is on a certain odd so it's kind of thinking about your ragdoll but your Ragdoll is only pushing up attack bar on a certain odd rather than all the time. Or it's like your Jackson, which is a great unit. Everyone that has Jackson loves to use Jackson. It's just a passive totem that doesn't use Jack shit, but sure. It's in the name. Jack. Son. Shit. Whatever. Um, but yeah, then keep in mind the Jackson, but then rather than working all the time. But then it works on that certain odd. And that certain odd is a... 30%. So that's like your Ragnar passive on a 30% activation rate. Or your Jackson passive on a 30% activation rate. Well, anyone that knows the slightest bit about me knows that I do not like these RNG bullshit buffs they tend to do all the fucking time and just create a bunch of extra raccoonies that is called a Gopso or an Angela or whatever dumb shit unit there is. Yeah, now they make Nick's pile of that. So rather than giving the allocations to me saying like, oh, you're a Contos employee and because of you, they're buffing your unit. I would rather say that Contos is fucking trolling me by buffing a unit for dumbass RNG, which I don't like at all. And people are like, yeah, this is going to be spammed in RTA right now because it strips. Yeah, it strips at a 80% rate sometimes yeah we love 80 percent rates we, we all know how segment works and that's 85 but then we have 80 on top of that 85 it's gonna be great guys it's gotta be great so yeah no oh say boss they buffed our ld5s again it's still fucking garbage it is useless and then of course i got people saying like oh my god say always cries about his ld5s no, if a unit is shit why should i call it good it's just the simple fact why should i say something is good if it's not and does that mean I'm crying about it? It's like, oh, it needs a buff. No, it's just a shit unit. One third of the units are shit. One third of the units are usable. And one third of the units are good. It's as simple as that. It's not always exactly to those odds, but it, it is as simple as that. Do I care if like a bunch of my units are not usable? No, I don't. I have plenty of other units to use. And if not, I'll just use something else that is free to play or whatever normal net five. It is not an issue. It's not about like crying about saying like, oh, it should be buffed. No, it's just me calling a unit shit. Because it is not usable in current state. However, I would say for all of the LDs I have, which is currently 18, I use about 17 of them. The only one I don't really use is Ritsu, even though I try to make him use. But if it just simply doesn't work, it doesn't work. Is that crying about a unit? No, it's just saying that it doesn't work because it factually didn't work. Well, for some people, it might be an issue, whatever they think. But the people that are actually thinking that it is a good buff because I pulled it or anything, this is the dumbest buff whether I pulled the unit or not. That's legit just the thing. I actually did have a video for the people that slightly know me. I do have a video where I explain how I would buff Nyx if it were up to me or how I would buff Ritsu if it were up to me. And Kantos, of course, does something completely different. That only would mean one thing. A, they completely do not watch my videos. And number B, is B a number right now? 
B is a number in this case, you just have to deal with it. They completely don't, do not buff things as I would say I would recommend them to buff it. Sure for some of them, but like most of them, no, not really. So yeah, if you would say like, oh yeah, they're buffing your unit and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, do it. I don't care. But let's keep on. We have the Beast Monk rule. Pretty shit unit in general on Alice of Brandy for one turn to two turns. It is a lot better. I did explain like how one turn to two turn is... Not necessarily two times better, but might be like a 10 times better. How does that work? Let's say you activate the branding on a unit that has 90% attack bar, but now sticks for 110% rather than just a 10%. That is an 11 times better. You get the math on that one. It's not, it's not a rocket side. Next one, Retash. What's actually funny where I had someone in my chat always asking a bunch of time, how about Retash? How would you buff Retash? How would you buff Retash? I'm like, Retash is kind of fine, but also not great. Like, why would people really be forced to address Retash? I'll read that Japan is interesting. A little bit more provoke rates. I'm actually not even sure if Retesh therefore becomes a hundred. Um, does he have something up in the skill one? He has nothing up in the skill one, so he's gonna stay at a eighty percent, which is, isn't too bad, not too great either. Then we have Sekmet, and oh, how do I love to death balance patches where we just address something else that completely doesn't matter. We like to have more activation rate on the skill 3. Ah, you want more activation rate on the skill 3. Let's decrease the attack bar by 15% if we do actually strip in the first place. It's like, yes, that is completely not what we ask for, and sure it is a buff, but... Clearly not what we asked for, and absolutely not how I would say for buff this unit. But let's move on, because they always listen to the SWC players and all of the streamers how to buff units, and therefore they only buff our units. The Wind Mage Mom, I actually don't even have that unit. It's gonna be max cooldown decreased by two if it's stacking up to 200. Okay, whatever. Then actually the buff I am most hyped about myself, which is pretty interesting, a Zyros. I do have Grogu myself, but I do think that Zyros is going to be better and more interesting right now because it would always crit. And always crit does mean I don't give a shit about elements, glancing or anything. As long as you have higher attack power than the enemy, which in arena offense is going to be all the time. But Zyros has a loaded kit and a half, like holy Jesus on the motorbike, man, bruh. Increase max cooldown, even increase it higher if it's not a boss. Well, most things you hit in arena aren't a boss. Uh, you have 50% extra damage. You don't give a shit about your crit rate, which is kind of interesting right now, because I guess it is a crit rate awakening. So maybe an accuracy awakening would be more interesting right now. But besides the point on that, I do think that Zyros might be a pretty insane. It's going to be a little bit hard into Camilla's, but I'm definitely in next rush when this battle patch is live. I'm going to be using a Zyros. That is for sure. Probably with Ron Nix on defense as well, but I'm definitely more hyped about the Zyros than the Nix. The next one is the Sea Emperor, which is going to be doing more damage on the skill one if there's no harmful effects. Maybe decent for Manananan, Okeanos, not even that much. Manananan is more of like the high damage dealer on skill one anyways, and all of the others don't really give a shit about it, but sure, whatever. We have the Desert Warrior, I mean Desert Warrior, the Bayek on Wind, that is going to be dealing more damage on its passive, that's now 7%. I guess Obaba would be happy about that. We have the Wind Hacker, which I guess is called Storm or something. I don't even remember. Increased damage from 10 to 20% for every harmful effect. It does do a bit of amount more damage. Maybe a Siege Defense kind of unit could be something. We have the Wind Druid, which is just lower on cooldowns for pretty much everything altogether. Is that really going to be a unit? Maybe a counter into the Odin uh carcano teams that we do tend to see on siege but to be honest there's a lot of options to counter that anyway so not sure if that is any great we have the fire chimera also known as rukan and we have a little bit higher chance of doing the collapse if you're being hit when the skills on cooldown cool and all i guess figaro with a 25 percent being a 35 percent not that great not that interesting whatever we have the Dark Skogel, also known as Trash. Sure, haha. <laughs> Increase your cool time by the Atlas Stone of 15% whenever an ally dies, up to 30%. Woohoo, no one really cares. Maybe someone cares, but I don't really care. We have the Fire Horus, which I do not even know the name of. 
But he has a seal effect on his skill that is pretty much looking like a seal effect, but it had the oblivion before. Now it also has a seal. I think there's always uh, also a armor break on it right now, but it's also after placing the oblivion. So if you miss it, you're not going to get it. Uh, RNG factors. We love RNG factors. So moving on to the next one. Appreciate you in it. Asura, Wind and Dark are slightly nerfed on the, uh, I think it's the S2 going from two to four hits to two to three hits. So, less RNG, I guess, in general. It's actually, yeah, the damage is, uh, remains unchanged, which actually does mean that if you go for two hits, would you actually deal more damage? Because that would make more sense, right? Because it couldn't be that the third hit is going to be doing twice the amount of damage, or would it? Because that would technically mean that it's unchanged, that hit one and two are like, let's say, uh, 25 and 25. Normally, that's like all four are like 25. And now we'd be 25, 25, and then the third hit would be 50. I don't think it was going to be that way. So actually, I think that the damage is unchanged probably would mean that the two hit is going to be more damage than normally, and that the four hit is going to be three hit, right? Or not? I don't know. Could be anything. But then we also have the wind one that's going to be absorbing rather than 10% ATB, it's 28% ATB, which is actually a pretty decent unit. Could be an interesting one over there. We have the Chun-Li or Blade Dancer, Wind and Dark, that's going to be decreasing more A to B, and then if they decrease A to B, they also go for the Ignore Defense. Could be a something, not that great, but could be a something. We also have the uh, Argon, Mirmir, Mir, and Grasfeld with the Rafu attack under the state of Berserk, also additionally decreasing the A to B of the enemy, which is normally at just an A to B up, but now also an A to B decrease, so it's kind of an Absorb, but not really, because if you miss an Absorb, it's still not there, but yeah, something. So, yeah, and then they have, like, a bunch of error fixes and stuff like that. So, in the end, balance patch. Mm. Where the hell the leader skills at? Where the hell, like, some Itadori getting speed lead on Siege or whatever? No, nothing on it. Actually, there's not a single Itadori in here. There's not a Sukuna in here. Why not? Apparently, I'm involved in this balance patch, according to people. Well, trust me, I could do a lot better on the balance patch than this kind of whatever. Sure, we have to keep in mind it is a balance patch towards RTA and towards RTA they always, or not even RTA, but towards, uh, during SWC they always tend to do a balance patch that's less impactful for RTA, blah, 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 you know the nonsense. But sure, uh, I would address some more stuff for Siege if I was involved in this balance patch rather than just making Nyx a more dumb RNG unit, I guess. Also, no leader skills, no changes on that, nothing too interesting. And to be honest, like the most hype from all of this balance patch, I am personally about the Zyros, which is kind of weird for having a Grogan. But I do think Zyros is going to be more interesting than Grogan in the first place, which I don't care about. But it is interesting that all of this balance patch is just the only thing that actually catches my eye is like the Grogan is going to be insane for damage. So just a Galleon, Tiana, Grogan. Or a Galintiana Zyros, or just a, maybe I can use that with my Nefty's team somewhere, or somewhere, somehow, I don't know. But yeah, I would say most hyped about the Zyros over there. Am I hot about the Fairy King? No. Is it going to be a good RTA unit? No. Is it going to be annoying for Arena Defense? Probably. Is it going to be better than it already was? Slightly. Is it actually good? No. Uh, so yeah, those are the things. That's pretty much just what I think about the balance patch. Uh, how would I rate this balance patch? Well, to be expected, I expected the balance patch 5 out of 10. Because we have a balance patch during SWC. But then it would be related around Siege or related around uh, PvE. And then it could be higher than 5 out of 10. Uh, this thing, it was disappointing. 3 out of 10? Yeah, probably 3 out of 10. I would say there's some decent boss. Maybe the light series becomes good on this, but... Still not really sure on it. Um, maybe the Celia becomes good on this, but still not sure, really sure on this. The Sekhmet is not going to become good on this. Like a lot of these buffs, these units are not going to become good because of those buffs. They're, we're already pretty much doing the same thing as they were doing before. Just a little bit better. And blah. That's, yeah, that, that is my summary of this whole patch. Yeah. If I was actually involved in this balance patch, as I got all of the allegations for, like, oh, they're buffing my units. Yeah, I would have done a lot better, trust me. I made a whole video about how I would buff units. I wouldn't waste my time talking about how I would buff all units to then not do these kind of things if I was actually. That is just the main thing. But either how, 
Keep your tinfoil hats on. Keep blaming people that can't do a shit about it. Enjoy this video, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one. Oh, uh, by the way, Sean B, you're going to be at lunch tomorrow at the office. I still got the buff Ritsu, but the, because that unit is absolutely garbage and they haven't pushed through my last iteration of what I recommended them to buff. But maybe we can discuss that during lunch. See you there.